Welcome back to this summary the final segment of today's Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking about you and your business. Got a lot to continue in our conversation. Do you want to invite you? Great TV show, and, and a gentleman who's been on my show, a uh, new TV show more than anyone. Uh, Lee Kaplan is our guest here this uh, segment. Uh, but the TV show is doing awesome, and uh, you're going to enjoy today's uh, today, uh, Sunday's program. Make sure you learn more about it at priceofbusiness.com. Lee Kaplan, he's with Smizer, Kaplan, and Veselka. He is a regular on this program, and uh, always delighted to have you on. Before we get into our topic, uh, let's talk just quickly. Tell us about your firm. Well, our firm handles uh, white-collar criminal matters and all kinds of commercial litigation. Uh, that ranges from fraud cases, breach of contract cases, whether they are you know, construction disputes or supply contracts, as well as patent cases. And, and during the week of February 16th, uh, our firm is going to be defending the last BP employee case out of the Deepwater Horizon. That's a case in which the government started with 23 different charges, 22 felonies and misdemeanor and they've been forced to dismiss 22 felony choices, uh, charges. They're down to one misdemeanor claim, which uh, is going to trial. So we have a very broad docket, and we represent everyone from small companies and proprietors to Fortune 10 corporations and superstar athletes. And that website is skv.com, skv. Dot com and uh, last week we ended the the last time you were on we ended the segment talking about cybersecurity but we only scratched the surface I think we ought to spend some time on that today uh, kind of give us a, kind of an overview of the topic real quick well nowadays we do almost everything online as you know and and this strikes home as well as at our national security for example within the last uh, two weeks. There's been another report that hackers have broken into the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI and released personal data related to 20,000 DHS and FBI employees. Well, those are the kind of people who could be blackmailed. I mean, that's true of probably any government employee, but, but for people like the FBI, if uh, the hackers are selling information on somebody who's an investigator then that person could be, say, vulnerable to uh, being told, you need to back off on this investigation or we're going to release this information. We know where your family lives. We know a lot of things about you. We have your personal information, so every one of your credit cards is going to get hacked and, and you'll, you know, your credit rating will be ruined. So there's a lot of blackmail possibilities there, and it's very disturbing that the United States government has been pretty slow to publicize this. Um, and my understanding is that a number of government employees just get some notice from the government that says, well, your information may have been released and we're taking steps to try to remedy this. If you have any questions, call us, and then you can't get information. But yeah. at the most personal level, there's a restaurant that I go to frequently, and I understand that that restaurant chain has had all of the social, the uh, credit card numbers and PIN codes of customers from May of 2014 or 15 until December of 2015 hacked. Well, uh, does that mean I need to change my credit, uh, change my credit card, and that every customer who was there needs to change the credit card? I asked the restaurant; they had no answers for me. If you call the banks, the banks don't really have an answer because they don't want to go through the hassle of changing all those credit cards. So what are you going to do? Yeah, very, very interesting yeah, and very important topic. And I do believe that the uh, government seems to be way behind the curveball on this. And, you know, and now you've got, uh, you know, a new chip added to, uh, you know, credit cards. But to me, it seems like, it, you know, it's just one more thing that the uh, hackers will get to enjoy uh, overcoming. Uh, there's almost a sense of futility around it. Well, it's an arms race at all times. And, I'm not persuaded that our government uh, is uh, in the lead on the arms race. In fact, I'm inclined to think it is not. So, you know, as an individual, you need to keep 
as much personal information out of your emails as possible. And I do think that people should change their credit cards every year. But if you own a business, the problem is that if you're hacked, and, and frankly, people in places like China and Russia are interested in almost every company now, whether you're milling pipe or, or doing welding or providing any kind of industrial equipment that has dimensions or providing any other kind of software, you are a target. And that means your customers' information can all get hacked. And I have seen a number of cases in which courts have certified class actions against large companies. And it's only a matter of time before that moves down to mid-sized and smaller companies. Uh, yeah. That you It'll be interesting to see what kind of your impact. Your security is. system is inadequate. Yeah. And so what has been some of the answer? Obviously, uh, for companies pay hackers to prevent hacking. You know, they, they hire uh, people who have experience in hacking to prevent hacking. Uh, but there's even a whole new class of insurance that's uh, developed to uh, respond to this. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, you can try to get some insurance against it. I don't know the parameters of what's available, but I have a feeling that the insurance companies are not fools. Since they get hacked, too, they're not going to insure against every risk. And so the best thing you can do to protect yourself against liability is to have IT professionals and try to stay atop the developments. The problem is you may or may not be protected against the actual hacking. We're just talking about being protected against liability if somebody's angry that your your information and their information that you have is hacked. The real protection just consist in spending probably ever increasing amounts of money on on security, internet security and computer security. Very interesting, very important. People need to stay on it. They need to be looking at their accounts uh, every every time, you know, an envelope comes in, you know, it seems like such a hassle. They need to be checking those accounts. They need to stay on it and, uh, you know, really be prepared and be proactive. They need to keep an eye on the news and see how they can respond, you know, uh, you know what they, they need to look at in terms of making sure they're being taken care of. What other thoughts come to your mind? Well, that that's about the best you can do. I mean, none of us who are business people other than, say, the Fortune 50 companies, can really afford to hire people as good as the people at the uh, government level, say the National Security Agency. So you do the best you can, but there's only a certain number of ex-employees of NSA or the FBI who are available uh, and have that kind of expertise to assist you. So uh, we'd probably be just as well off hiring 16-year-olds who are experienced computer wizards as people who advertise themselves to be wizards, uh, I'm only partly joking. But, but no, you are only partly joking. I, I'm amazed at what some of these young people can do. And uh, always glad to have you on the show, Lee Kaplan Smizer, Kaplan of the Selka, the law firm, SKV.com. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome. When we come back tomorrow, we're going to have much more for you. Do want to remind you that content here shows up over there at USDaterReview.com, including our most recent TV show, and uh, that included uh, our friend Lee Kaplan. Check that out and much more. Have a great day. Spend it wisely on this station.